Hey, hey Meredith. Eric. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well, you thanks. Sorry. We are uh, just getting started here in class tonight. So uh, thanks so much for joining us. Where are you tonight? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin. Incredible. Well, we really appreciate you making the time for this. So let me just give you like the 30-second spiel, and then I'm going to turn it over to some of our students. Um, so this is social media management. It is the first social media course that's um, offered at the university for undergrads of this magnitude about how to actually be a practitioner of social media. Uh, so we have about 100 students in the class. They have all submitted tons of questions, and we have four students tonight who are going to act as uh, moderators for this, and they're going to go through um, and ask the questions that the students came up with. All right? Oh, nice. Um, I like it. Yeah, so, and we've been doing, uh, we've been reading your books in this class. We've read Socialnomics, um, as well as What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube. Um, and so we've really been enjoying your content and watching the, the videos that go along with that. All oh, right? You guys are too kind. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Go Blue Hens. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Eric. Woo! All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get this started, and I'm going to turn it over to Morgan, so the students are going to cycle through. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Meredith. Yep. Hi, Eric. My name's Morgan Rocco. I'm a junior mass communications major, and I'm also a social media ambassador for the University of Delaware. To start with question number one, my classmates and I have read various chapters from Social Nomics. What inspired you to write the book? What inspired me was that I saw this, for Social Nomics, the first book, was that I just saw this crossroads that people weren't getting it, that social media was going to be so big when it came to everything in our lives, personal, business, political. Um, and so instead of talking myself blue in the face, my buddy said, you should write a book on this. And I actually had a thousand rejection letters for my fiction work. So I was actually well prepared for this opportunity when I met with the publisher and signed a deal with them. So. That was the impetus just to make sure that everyone knew this huge opportunity existed for them no matter what their walk of life was, and so I wanted to put it in a book form. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good question, Morgan. That's a tough one to beat. High hurdle. <laughs> Hi, Eric. I'm Sean. I'm the marketing executive of the Entrepreneurship Club, and I'm also co-founder. And me and my classmate Megan would like to know, um, if you think more companies are turning to social media to network or hire millennials these days? Great question, guys. Um, so, yeah, definitely 86%. Well, first of all, 93% of companies use LinkedIn when they're in the hiring process. I'm not sure why it's not 100%, honestly. Uh, that's an old stat from a couple of years ago, so maybe it's closer to 100%, but 93% of companies use LinkedIn. So. That's a big signal for everyone in your class that if you're not on LinkedIn, get on there. Um, if you are on LinkedIn, then make sure your profile is at 100% completion, and they'll tell you how to get it to 100% completion. So you already have enough homework, but that's going to serve you the best in order to get a job. Start using LinkedIn and start networking now while you're a student, and just reach out to former alum and say, how did you become so successful? I want to sit down and have coffee with you for 10 minutes. And every Blue Hen alum is going to answer yes to that if you're a current student. So take advantage of that. Once you get out, it's a little harder to network. So make sure you're doing it while you're in school. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, two Eric, for two. <laughs> hey, Eric. My name is Lewis Brooks. I'm a junior communications major from Nutley, New Jersey. And going on with question three, me and my classmates would love to know, when trying to reach a target audience, what is the most influential and effective platform social media, in your opinion? You know, it's a, the dreaded answer, right? It depends on what you're trying to do. But um, I always say don't boil the ocean. Don't be on all these tools. Figure out which tool works the best for you. Um, for me personally, and again, it might be different for everyone in this room. For this room, maybe it's like Instagram's your go-to tool, or maybe it's Snapchat, whatever it might be. Um, but for me, it's Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, and that's not to say that you couldn't use Facebook or Google Plus to tremendous success. It's just for me, that's what I've found to be the most successful. And again, I work with tons of companies. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Figure out which one works the best for you and go very deep on it. So instead of being on every tool, figure out what works best for you and just go, go as deep as possible on it. Uh, but I'm a huge fanboy of LinkedIn. They're not blocked in China. They're only at X amount. They're, they're only in a certain amount of countries right now and I can see it growing as I travel the world and so they're going to surpass Facebook's number I guarantee it of 1.4 billion they're going to surpass that so I guarantee that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And for everyone in the class we are doing Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 if you follow the hashtag so you can respond and engage that way live tweeting. 
Hey, Eric. My name is Paxton. I'm a communication major and a social media ambassador for the university. So going with question four, my classmate Sarah and I want to know how you originally developed an interest in social media marketing. Yep, and so shout out to Sarah. I don't know if she's sitting in class there, but uh, yeah, she's back. Yeah, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no, great question. The reason I've got interested in this is I've got a technology background, but it's not about the technology that gets me excited about this stuff. It's really about you can develop relationships like this. Like this is crazy. This is so amazing that you guys are reading my book. We're able to connect. Um, so that's the power of these tools, and so that's what gets me the most excited is being able to develop these relationships around the world. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Man, you guys dressed a lot nicer than I did in college. I had like a bad <laughs> um, It's Morgan again. Um, with question five, we've talked a lot about uh, in class about the influence of social media and business. And my classmate Christine and I were wondering how you think social media has changed your original business model. I love it as changing the model because it changes it at a, at a grander scale. So the two things that drives the success of any business historically still applies. It's just at a different level. So number one, getting the right people on the team. That drove the success of any business. The second thing was word of mouth. And now what we see is the one of the first questions we had and the third question, very related, is to get the right people on the team, you need to use LinkedIn. And so that's now – different scale, a different way of how you attract talent. And then the second piece, word of mouth, is now in digital steroids when you think about all these tools at our disposal. And so it's still very important, but even more so, now we have scale to this word of mouth, or I like to say word of mouth has gone world of mouth. And so that's the main difference. And so a lot of it's the same, it's just at a much different level and scale, but the end result is that the great companies are going to win, and it's going to be a faster cycle. Cycle. There's not going to be these bad companies that exist because they might control the money, they might control the distribution. Is that the good companies are going to be, the light's going to be shi uh, shined on that shi terrible grammar. See, I'm an author. <laughs> the light's going to come out on who's good and who's bad very quickly. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Eric, it's your best friend, Sean, again. Oh, man, you're, doing, <laughs> you're working your hard. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, um, regarding world of mouth, when it's negative and it goes wrong for your brand, what are the best ways to go about damage control? The best way is, if, first of all, figure out did you make a mistake or were you at fault? If you are, then tell it first and tell it fast. You know, a lot of people still make the mistake of trying to sweep stuff under the rug, um, whether that's the – and you still see it today, like the Ray Rice issue, right? Is it yeah. – at some point, everything's going to come to light. You've got to understand that. And so it goes back to an old adage of public relations is if you have bad news, tell it first and tell it fast before someone else tells it for you. The other thing is to make sure that deal in the forum that works best. So sometimes you might start off in the digital forum with the negative comment, but sometimes that's best taken offline. If you can get in person with that person, it's a huge help, right? Face-to-face, -face, you can't replace it. So if you can grab coffee with that person, easier said than done, or at least get them on the phone. Much different than a, in a contextual text back and forth. So that's my advice to companies when they find themselves in that loop. One, admit when they're at fault. Two, take the time to resolve the issue. The good news is if they do, so if you look at FedEx, if they have an issue, issue with a client and they resolve that issue with the client, that client's three times more likely to repeat as a customer than someone that never had an issue in the first place. So think about that. They've got happy customers and never had a problem but they're most loyal are the ones that had a problem that they took the time to care. And so the short version of this, sorry to make you stand up so long, Sean. <laughs> oh, short, no, I like talking to you. <laughs> the, short, the short answer is that if you show the time to care, that's the most important thing, and, and you'll have a tremendous amount of success. That's what most of us want. Do you care about my problem? I do care about your problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I don't know what Sean was saying, but your actual best friend, Lewis, is back. Oh, nice. <laughs> Question seven. So we talked a little bit about it before, but we're going deeper with LinkedIn now. And me and my classmate, Leah, were interested in um, how effective is LinkedIn as a networking tool for students seeking employment after graduation? Huge, huge. Uh, you guys have a unique opportunity, hashtag BFF Lewis, because... <laughs> The, the best way to approach it is while you're in school, you don't understand the power that you have with alum because uh, they're always looking to help 
students out, and they're more likely for a reason to help you out while you're in school rather than when you're out of school. The hardest part to do, it's, it's so hard to network when you need the network. And right now, if you're a sophomore, a junior, even a senior, it's not like you need the network immediately. So they, they understand you actually probably do care how they became successful. And so again, make that phone call or start off with that LinkedIn connection and say, hey, I know you're super busy because you're so successful, but I'd love to grab 10 minutes of your time to sit down and have coffee. And I want to know how did you become so successful once you left school? How did you prepare yourself while you are in school? And so you'll, you'll develop those relationships. That's the best way to do it. Now you can do it with LinkedIn. It's easy to find these folks. Awesome. Thank you. Hashtag yeah. BFF. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, I'm a little bit concerned because I thought Blue Head Paxton was your best friend. So now <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'll still ask you question number eight. So clearly you're able to measure the effectiveness of LinkedIn really well. But um, my classmate Carlos and I wanted to know, there's a bunch of new social media platforms coming up all the time, and how do you measure those for professional purposes? Yeah, so I always say don't invest in the tool, invest in the trend. And so that sounds like a pithy comment, but try to figure out, stay with the tried and true, and then you can figure out, like Google Plus is a good example. We don't know how much that's going to take off. Um, it's a better technology than Facebook, so you think, oh, it's going to take off. But you really don't know because there's a whole network effect of having 1.4 billion people on Facebook. Um, so the short answer is, you know, take a look at these tools. There's always new ones. You ask yourself, really, do you think this is going to be around, or is it a short-term play? Uh, but keep your investment light because it's going to change. Keep the investment heavy in the people and in the trend, but don't overinvest in the tool because it's going to change, especially at your age. If you're trying to reach your age market, is that you guys like to hop around to different tools, and that's true of any generation at your age, and so it's important for you to realize that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're still my best friend. I got a lot of best friends. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Morgan again with um, question number nine. So this is a social media management class and we all kind of have pre-professional Twitter accounts and along these lines my classmate Shannon and I are curious what type of Twitter engagement do companies look for um, in pre-professional accounts? And that's looking for to hire people or, or what yeah. veins? Yeah, okay. like a job or an internship or something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, the most important thing they're looking for is someone that's passionate and professional, so the two Ps. Um, when I hire someone, it used to be that's like, tell me what you do. Tell me what you did. And now it's show versus tell. So I just give them my tablet or my phone or my MacBook and say, here, walk me through your accounts. Show me that you're passionate about this stuff outside of work. You say you want to be in social media. You want to be in digital media or mobile. Let's really see how true that is. I want to see what are you doing you know, and obviously if you do have a lot of followers connected on LinkedIn or on Twitter, that's an added plus because now I know you've got a following, so it's going to help us promote stuff that we need to promote, but also it's going to help to attract additional talent. And so if you're on an even course with another applicant, if you've got a lot of connections on LinkedIn or a lot of followers on, say, Twitter or Instagram, then that's going to put you over the top because it's going to allow you to attract other people to the company and also get the word out on stuff you're trying to do. Great, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> Eric. Uh, hey, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fun. I'm like not it. You guys down are for this polygamous best friendship thing, so <laughs> I want my best friend bracelet back. <laughs> On to question 10, my new best friend, Francesca, remember, <laughs> recalled in our last MM chat, you tweeted success doesn't happen alone. So who can you attribute for your success in social media? Yeah, I mean, my success, it goes to the core, uh, obviously, to my parents, huge help. I played basketball at Michigan State University. Coach Izzo instilled, like, one of his famous lines was when you're about to throw up, run around the track is like you're not on this team because you have the most talent, you're on the team because you're willing to put in the work, right? There's some other people on campus that might have as much talent as you, but you're willing to put in the hard work. And so uh, those two are the base. And then in terms of people that I look to now that I'm in the social realm, I love Guy Kawasaki's work. I think he does a lot of breakthrough stuff. He's always looking out what's next. Um, so Guy Kawasaki, he's fantastic. 
if you want to look at someone that's good in small business, so a lot of you in the room might want to start your own small business, uh, Dave Kirpin, he's fantastic to look at what he's doing at Likeable Local and Likeable Media. Um, and so those are the two that I'd look out um, on that, that front. So those are great, great folks as well. All right, thank you. Thanks. So I'm a huge Michigan State fan. Just come All right. It. That's why I'm wearing the green and white. Exit's my logo. This is my company logo. Equal man. <laughs> so moving on to question 11. Uh, me and my classmate Sarah would like to know, from your extensive research, is there any one statistic that you find particularly shocking? A two that are kind of shocking is that 92% of all children under the age of two already have a digital stamp. They already have a digital identity footprint out there. So 92% of children in the United States already have something that's posted about them. 25% have one before they're born. That's parents you know, posting their name. It's parents posting the sonogram. And then the other one, which obviously you guys don't fall into. I know I did when I was a student. But in general, human beings' attention spans are only seven seconds long. They only focus on one thing for seven seconds. And a goldfish is eight seconds. So I thought that that was very intriguing. It is. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> well, don't worry. Lewis is gone and I have returned. So for question number 12, um, my fellow social media ambassador, Blue Hen Antonio, and I we're curious. We've used or talked about a lot of different um, social media management tools in this class, like Hootsuite and TweetDeck, and we wanted to know which social media management tools you yourself find most useful. Oh, man, great question. I use Hootsuite. I used to use TweetDeck. I haven't been on TweetDeck in a couple of years, so I don't know if it's fantastic now. Um, but I switched to Hootsuite. I, I've liked it more since I did that switch. Um, so that's a huge tool. A lot of apps that I use, I use um, an app called Refresh. And so that's helpful if you're doing a meeting with someone that pulls in all the information about that person so that you know a ton about that person. What have they been posting during the week? You know, you might not even know what they look like. It pulls in their image if you're meeting them for lunch. Uh, but it pulls in all this helpful information from LinkedIn, from other sources, so you know what they're all about. Um, so that's a huge tool that I use. Uh, another tool, whether I'm working out or I'm doing something where I just want to listen to my headphones, is uh, U-Mano, U-M-A-N-O. And what that does is it actually reads all the top blog posts to you from a professional voice. It's not an automated voice, it's actually a real person. And so it's a good way for me to catch up quickly. So if I'm at the gym or jogging, that I can just listen to the, the latest news and, and the blogs are read to me. Yep, that's a nerd alert, but it's true. <laughs> Great answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, so being on a college campus, Yik Yak is a very like popular app around here, so many of my classmates and I are interested in what your personal opinion on the social media platform Yik Yak is. Yeah, I mean, this one's got a lot of news, right? And so I almost would love to know why you guys like to use it. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious. It just fascinates me. I guess sometimes we want to have an anonymous outlet to, but that's what my book, What Happens the Biggest Days on YouTube, is all about, is that don't kid yourself. There's going to be a way to get in there and have in a yik yak. So if you're posting stuff up there that you wouldn't want your mom to see, they're going to see it. So I mean, someone's going to hack into that and get all that stuff out of there. So that's my word of caution. We've already seen it with Snapchat, um, with some of the celebrity nudes. Uh, but that's that's the key. Is there's some places that it's good for an anonymous. Like if you're getting cyberbullied and you just want to be anonymous and have a forum to where you can exchange those ideas. Um, so it's, it's like a tricky situation. So what I would say is that I don't see the long-term use of these just because I think we're moving to a fully transparent world. That being said, that might yeah, yeah, by all means use it. Just understand that what you post, just understand that at some point someone's going to hide that identity to you most likely, so just be careful what you're putting out there. All right, thank you. But can I ask you a question? Why do you think it's so popular? Yeah. I think, like you said, because it's anonymous, so people can, like, I think a lot of people are, like, embarrassed to say things, like, out loud or, like, their opinions. And then I also think because, like, you could get, like, ups, that probably, like, boosts people's confidence and makes them feel better about themselves. That's what I think. I don't know. And it's also, like, you get a lot of, like, the news that's, like, happening around campus, like, from there, but, like, without, like, texting your friend. Like, oh, like the bus is like broken, something oh, like that. Sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> hey, Eric. Uh, 
How many? I didn't tell, I didn't tell a joke. Um, you. <laughs> well, Francesca didn't work out, so I'm on my own for question 14 here. This is a personal question for me. Uh, so we have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have uh, we've discussed building personal branding through uh, viral YouTube videos, uh, as per the uh, the documentary Generation Like. So I was wondering, uh, in your personal your personal opinion, what will be the most engaging digital content when sixty percent uh, of digital content is video in twenty seventeen? Got it. So y y I might be breaking up too. You're breaking up a little bit with the connection, but I think the question was, what's the most important content when by 2017 it'll be 60% video? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Yep. It's just a little okay. delayed. You're probably delayed on your end too, so I apologize. Um, I think the mo most important thing is this is very common sense, but common sense isn't that common, is to make sure that what's of use to the viewer, um, and obviously the quicker you can get to it, it's harder to write a short story or a short video than a long one, so the quicker you can get to the core, the better you're going to be, and always put yourself in the shoes of the viewer, what's going to be of value to the viewer. So many of us put the shoe on like what's important to me, the producer, and that's when you lose. It's always got to be what's in it for the viewer, not what's in it for me as the producer. All right, thank you. Salutations again, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I got a quick question. 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 <laughs> how many in the room use? How many in the room use Yik Yak? Yeah, well, Can you see? Hold the screen down. Yeah, show of hands. Oh, yeah, probably like, like raise them high. It's 80? okay. I'm not paying attention to who you are. Eighty like percent. Uh, I, I feel like fifty percent. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Clearly, I can't count. Right? All right, fifty percent. And then our teachers using Yik Yak. I am on Yik Yak. Yes. <laughs> I mean, after your comment, I'm I don't think you're an average professor, though. I mean, I deleted my Yik Yak like two seconds ago. So. That. <laughs> <laughs> um. So moving along with question fifteen. Uh, my classmate Allie and I were interested in asking you, is it more important to introduce new content or relevant content to your audience? Oh, man, relevant. But if it can be new and relevant, well, that's a powerful combination. So more important relevant. But at the end of the day, if you have relevant and new, wow, that's, that's super powerful. So the answer is relevant. But if you can have new and relevant, even more powerful. Got it. Thank you. Okay, come I'm back. Um, so question number 16 is kind of, we discuss a lot in class, like you believe that social media actually saves people time um, rather than distracts them. So I was just curious, along with the rest of my class, do you think social media has any negative effects on face-to-face -face and real-life communication and or no? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think some people just rely heavily on the social media tools and they forget to have the coffees and the lunches. And so that's why it's going to separate you from everybody else if you're putting in the quote-unquote hard work to actually have those face-to-face -face conversations and those face-to-face -face lunches. Um, for example, if I could be in Delaware, it would be a much greater experience to be in, in Delaware with you right now. This is fantastic, phenomenal. It's the best thing we can do. You know, I'll try to make it happen one of these days, Meredith. Uh, but yeah, it would be great to physically be there. Okay, thank you. All right, Eric, I'm going to jump in quickly. Um, I want to kind of give you a quick tour of the room, and I guess I want to give you the chance if you have any questions that you want to ask any of our students, and I might give them a chance to respond. Is that okay with you? Oh, I love okay. it, yeah. All right. For sure. So here's, so here's our class. Everybody kind of want to wave hi to Eric. Yeah. Like, make sure you can see all of you. I'm not sure what's on the screen. Yeah, we got, oh, we got all sorts of stuff going on. So my back row, can the back row please wave? The back row has their own hashtag, hashtag back row probs. Oh. They're wonderful. Um, but if you have a question or two, I can call on a student or two that might want to answer it other than our class moderators. Anything you'd like to? Oh, yeah, no. What would you like to know I'd love to, our students here at UD? I'd love to know. I'd love to know. I love that you have a, a hashtag for the back row. But if you're in Meredith's class, you got to understand it's like being at a Lady Gaga concert. You want to be in the front row. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> 
<laughs> from the rocks. <laughs> There's another one. New hashtag. <laughs> <Let's go rock. laughs> All right. Eric, do you know anything? Do uh, you want to know that we could kind of do some engagement before you have to? I, I don't know how much time you have, but I don't want to hold you. Yeah, no, I'd love to know what's the top three tools that students use. What are the top three tools that students are using? Ian. What yeah. are the cool tools? No, jump up. Top. Yeah, jump up. <laughs> We're going to hear from Ian. <laughs> hey, Eric. Hey. You have a new best friend now. Um, <laughs> so top three tools. Um, for, I would say Twitter, Facebook, and it should be LinkedIn, but probably not. Um, was that the question? Yeah. yeah. Top three tools on social media? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, best. Wow. So it's not Instagram. It's not Snapchat. It's not YouTube. Well, I mean, for me, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have an Instagram, so that's probably not saying much. But as somebody who's you know, later in college, I think LinkedIn has become more important. So I've learned to, to work with it, but I don't know about the rest of my class. You're going to hear from one more student. Share her. Thanks, Eric. Eric, in the meantime, you. you can add me on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Eric. I'm Christina. Um, I would say our top three are would have to be Twitter, um, Facebook, and probably Instagram, because a lot of the university stuff is on those three social media sites. So I keep up a lot with the uni what's going on at the university through, through, uh, through those three. Okay, cool. So the media that's saying Facebook's dead with college students is wrong. Yes. Okay. 100%. 100% wrong. They nice. Still, they, you guys don't post to it very much. Am I correct? What's that? You don't post to Facebook now, but you probably look at it still, right? Sometimes, yeah. All right. Any other questions that, that you want to ask of our class or any advice you want to ask? I do. This is more of a question. It's a challenge. Ooh. And so my channel, how many students challenge? are there? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Wait, Eric, this I is have, the ice. I have this class hashtag. It's Chapman Challenge. I'm really excited about this. So you fit right in well with the <laughs> curriculum. Go ahead. Okay. Hashtag Chapman Challenge. How many students are in there? A hundred. A hundred. And you're reading both books. Have you started reading What Happens in Vegas stays on YouTube? We've read some of that, yes. Yes. Okay. I my challenge to you is if you, there's a hundred students, so if, I'm going to make it easy on you. If you get 25 people in the class to review, so only you need 25 additional reviews on Amazon, and you could say it's a one star if you don't like the book, okay. so it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, then I'll order pizza for the whole class. Oh. How about that? Is that going to happen today? Do we have a deadline for this? You do. You have two weeks, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. All right, so we're going to make it next Monday. I want everybody to have taken a look and reviewed the book by that point. And we will have a discussion about it in class. How about that? Fair? Eric Fair? just reviewed it. <laughs> oh, BFF Lewis has already reviewed it for you. So. <laughs> All right, Eric, do you have, um, I know your time is precious, and we are just really grateful for, um, for everything that you've done for you know, Blue Hens and connecting us and all the content you've provided for our curriculum uh, with this you know, first offering of this class. Is there anything we haven't asked you today that you would like to share with us? No, you guys rock. I mean, just want to say thank you so much. Um, obviously, thank you. You've been a rock star professor. Thanks for reading the books. Hopefully, they're helpful for you. Feel free to give me any feedback that you want so we can make it better for everybody else. Um, and then also, too, feel free to shoot me a note. I'm, I'm equal man at equal man. So if I can help in any way, let me know. We do take on interns as well remotely. So if you're interested, shoot me a note. But um, anyways, I just want to say thank you so much, and hopefully I'll get there physically soon. Yeah, hopefully. If not, I'll come to Austin. We can make the, we can make this work. Grab lunch or something. Um, all right. So uh, <laughs> I'm good going down when well, it's cold. When well, it's cold yeah. up here. Come on. All right. Well, Eric, thank you so much. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody in the class for participating. I want to thank our moderators from the class and one more like soup of them. All your all your best friends. <laughs> All your best friends. <laughs> wave, wave. Everybody wave. Oh, we're doing digital storytelling in class, so we're going to get, like, Eric waving. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, we're good. Okay. Um, Eric, thanks again so much, and I will be in touch via um, email and expect a lot of reviews on your book. Oh, thank you. You guys rock. Thank you so much. I appreciate Great, thanks. it. Thanks. Enjoy your night. Thanks, Bye. Thank you.